As we discussed yesterday, it appears President-elect Biden intends to nominate Congresswoman Marsha Fudge of Ohio to lead the Housing and Urban Development Agency. And this week, Nina Turner, former national co-chair of Bernie Sanders' campaign, filed paperwork to run for that seat in Ohio's 11th district. President and founder of Solidarity Strategies and author of T.O. Bernie and former senior advisor to the Bernie Sanders campaign, Chuck Rocha, is back with us, as well as White House reporter for Real Clear Politics, Philip Wegman. Um, always a pleasure, gents. Chuck, let me start with you. Obviously, uh, you know Nina Turner quite well. Uh, what do you think her prospects are in this race and what do you think her impact would be in Washington? Look, I am super duper excited and I'm not going to hide my emotions here. Senator Nina Turner is one of my best friends. And for a year, we shared a wall in an office. So I got to hear her scream a lot and she got to hear me scream a lot. And every time <laughs> she was screaming, it was normally about making sure that the workers, that people, that staff, that voters were being taken care of. And she would have that kind of fight and that kind of vigor if she got to Congress. So I think her chances are good. Now, just from a strategy point of view, why is it so good for her? Well, this morning, there's probably at least six other people looking at running in this race. So it's just like the presidential primary. If you're gonna spread a primary vote out over four, six, eight different candidates, and you have such a base of support amongst Bernie Sanders faithful in a Democratic primary, that sets you up in a really good way. And don't forget about Right or wrongly, the mother milk of politics is money. And I bet mm -hmm. Senator Nina Turner can do a pretty darn good job at raising $27 contributions on the Internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's interesting to me, Phil, is about how this is going to affect Nancy Pelosi's already mm -hmm. very slim majority in the House. Right. So she's got, you know, 220 seats. Marsha Fudge is out. Let's say Nina Turner does win this seat. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that she's not going to go all along with most of what Nancy Pelosi wants and might be one of the most outspoken members of Congress there, this could actually be a big problem for House leadership, couldn't it? Oh, oh, absolutely. And also, what is Nancy Pelosi's majority in the House right now? Four or five yeah, four seats? seats? This is yeah. one of the smallest majorities since, um, you know, late 19th century. Right. Uh, and I think that with, uh, with, with uh, Senator Nina <laughs> Turner, you know, coming to the House of Representatives, uh, this is someone uh, who, you know, has uh, a backbone, obviously, you know, when it comes to progressive issues, this is someone who brings a lot of, you know, intellectual and organizing firepower. Uh, I think that um, if, if nothing else, this would solidify uh, the progressive voice uh, in, in Congress. And I think it would bolster the squad. And at that point, um, you have Nancy Pelosi, who can no longer just say, oh, well, it's just, you know, five or six voices. Um, instead, you know, it would be, you know, a considerable block. And I think that, uh, you know, the speaker would have to come to them on a number of different issues with margins that tight. Yeah. I mean, that's it, Chuck, is you start getting, OK, you've got four squad members. That's one thing. And a more sizable majority and you start getting eight, nine, ten people who are reliably willing to band together to go against Democratic leadership. That ends up being a really significant challenge when you have such a slim margin on your majority in the House. Do you think that Nina will help to strengthen that resolve of the squad? Because we've seen at times they've been a little bit squishy. At times they've been a little bit quiet in challenging, challenging Democratic leadership. Based on what you've seen of Nina, do you think that she would sort of uh, fortify their willingness to be, <laughs> <laughs> to be a little bit of a fly in the ointment here? You know that answer already, and the answer is yes. So if Senator Nina Turner makes it to Congress and she joins Cory Bush, it's going to be the squad and Sister Sledge. It's going to be like a rock concert in the house. And that's just what's <laughs> going to happen. Like, I know for a fact, because I, I'm when I say that me and Senator Turner are friends, we are friend friends. Like, I know her passion. That's why I know she would be such a great congresswoman, because that woman every day wakes up thinking about folks around her and how she could help them and how she can fight for them. I watched her fight for our staff. I watched her fight for that staff down in South Carolina. I watched her fight for folks all the time. And when she would come into my office and we would talk about having to do something for the Bernie campaign, it was always trying to get more money into the field, more money into the hands of people who needed it, trying to get that voice out there. So I think she'll run a great campaign. I think she'd be a great addition in the House. And let's be clear about the majority. This is a safe Democratic seat. This is a majority African-American seat. It goes from Cleveland all the way down to Akron. Like this is not a seat we're going to lose. How, what kind of Democrat we're going to put in that seat is the choice. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be very interesting. And I, if I were Nancy Pelosi, I would be uh, I'd be quaking in my boots. Over well, and that is one thing. I'm yeah. sure they will do everything they can to keep <laughs> Nina Turner from coming Certainly. to town. But it may ultimately be out of their power. Gentlemen, great to see both Thanks, of you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Thanks. All right, coming up, Matt Iglesias is going to join us to discuss how the Biden administration is shaping up. That's next.